Welcome to the Wealth Stream Podcast. The team at Hightower Great Lakes share their insights and passions for empowering their clients to live their best life. In this energetic podcast, we will take you on a journey to help you navigate your financial future, overcome life's challenges to reach your financial goals, and find the financial clarity you've been searching for. Let's explore the downstream impact of your wealth and what it means to you, your family, and your community to live greater. Hello and welcome to The Wealth Stream with Tim Scannell from Hightower Great Lakes. Tim, I'm excited about today's topic. Well, you must be excited about inflation then because that's <laughs> what we're talking about. And I know. that's the word that if I was to measure like how many, what word is said the most in all my meetings uh, each week, it would probably be inflation and interest rates. So I thought I'd talk about inflation and then specifically its impact on business valuations. The words that are said in most of my meetings are, Eric, put that donut down. <laughs> that's my one. Not another donut. <laughs> she says, like, that's enough. That, that's your third one, sir. You, you need to back away from the donut table. Oh, okay. So you just need to get bigger donuts then. That's all. Oh, that's brilliant. Exactly. I knew I hired you for a reason. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> you were bigger donuts. I like that. But I only had one. <laughs> so I only had but, one. It was like the size of my pounds, head. But other yeah. than that, yeah. Apple fritters, by the way, that's the go-to. Ooh, those what about good. you? I like, um, actually, I just, we we're eating apple pie last night. Delicious. Very, very good. Yeah. And it's round like a donut. So it counts. <laughs> kind of, but I'm not a donut fan. I would prefer vinegar, salt versus sugar. So really some potato chips instead of any dessert. That's what I'll eat. Okay. Well, any of those things are going to make us inflate, right? So <laughs> exactly. let's get back on inflation, shall right. we? Sorry. Yes, we will. Yeah. All right. So what, I mean, I, I don't want to ask the question, what's so important about inflation, Tim? We know it's, it's huge. So what are we talking about specifically today? Yeah. So when we, you know, when we work with our clients, we've talked about it before. I think we have a pretty unique wealth management formula, not just investments, but mm -hmm. we also talk about wealth enhancement and wealth enhancement. I should say inflation can affect your wealth enhancement, right? Because it yes. affects your purchasing power. So as it specifically relates to business owners, inflation really has an impact on the valuation and affects their ability to exit. And we do a lot of exit planning because we want our clients when they reach their freedom point to be able to exit into their whatever full life, you know, to, to do work on whatever goals or priorities they have. So with inflation showing up where it really hadn't been for a while, it become a big topic, especially as it relates to business valuations and people's ability to exit. Yeah, I I can't imagine. I mean, you, you've spoken about manufacturers on here before many times. Yeah. And I can't imagine the cost of their raw materials, the cost of their pre-made materials that they incorporate into their own manufacturing, and then the shipping costs. All I mean, there's inflation affects so many different little pieces that are all the pieces of somebody's puzzle, right? They're, they're putting something together, manufacturing something in maybe in your hometown. And yet... Yeah. All the things that they need for that are now costing more. And it's how much can you pass on to the consumer without it being putting it out of price, you know, for them. And I mean, there's so many aspects of this that are, that are tough. Yeah. And so, you know, I think as we're recording, inflation is somewhere just slightly above 8%. Oof. But just to give you some context, you know, if you go back to like um, 2000, May, you know, the first quarter of 2000, it kind of ranged between one and a half and 2%. And then if you look back at the previous 14 years, the range, again, just the range was between, you know, one, one and a half, two percent. So part of the problem is that it just really rose so rapidly. And you can imagine as a business owner, if you don't know like what your cost of labor is, because you don't know what raises are going to be based on inflation. If you don't mm -hmm. know what your cost of materials will be, um, it's really hard to calculate pricing. It's harder to calculate rate of return. It's harder to you know, execute and implement new projects. So it's definitely a, a big thing. And in, inflation is really, you know, you see it, I see it. It's really just the cost to live, you know, what my rent, my car payment, my food, my medical. But for a business owner, it's also compensation. You know, so if you are in an industry where people, you know, or salaries are the biggest or largest percentage of your um, operating costs, Inflation impacts salaries. Inflation impacts the ability to recruit, retain, and hire. Um, if you're in an industry, even with technology, where you know you don't need maybe as much labor and you're investing in robotics or other technologies, 
you still have the raw input costs that have gone mm-hmm. up. So it's a topic that everyone's talking about. But basically, you know, as it affects people, it's when prices go up. Some people will buy fewer goods because they have a fixed amount of money and they buy less. And that's also part of the problem too. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You've been doing this for a very, very long time. And I was just curious. Inflation affects things, right? And then prices go up. Do you normally see businesses lower their prices after inflation comes back down? Because I just have not seen that pattern where it really comes down to where it was before, because now they're kind of used to, the consumer's used to paying a certain amount. So they're like, well, they'll keep paying it. For sure. No, no, I think that, you know, one of the things that people that we talk to people about is if prices go up 10% in a given year, Mm -hmm. they're not going to go, the the prices, the, the cost of lumber won't necessarily go down. Right, it'll still. If it goes from a dollar to a dollar ten, it's probably going to stay at a dollar ten. If, if inflation reduces, it just means that instead of going up ten percent next year, it'll maybe go up two percent. Mm-hmm. But but unless you have deflation, you you kind of have your you moved up to the pricing levels where typically they don't go back down. Yeah, and, and that's one of the problems. And then the other thing too is psychologically, there's this expectation that if our economy is somewhere around seventy percent consumer spending the GDP. And if people psychologically think it's going to continue to go up, that impacts their buying patterns too. But I think the answer to your question is no, <laughs> it yeah. generally does not go down. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. The, the primary impact I think that, you know, we read about, we talk to clients about is number one, it's possible that in some industries they're going to be selling less. So if you're selling discretionary goods that all of a sudden the consumer is saying, well, I'm not going to buy as much of that because my inflation's high, my income's fixed, I don't have as much money to spend. Mm-hmm. I may buy less um, movies. You know, maybe you're going to go to fewer movies. Maybe you're going to go to the the restaurant less. That kind of thing. The second primary effect would be that business owners will likely see at least initially less profit because you know if your costs are going up, if your sales are leveling out or going down, um, it's going to be hard to maintain those same profit margins. And then especially with uh, the cost of labor. And then the final one really is that everyone I think I'm talking to just in any industry are all seeing that they're paying higher costs. And the ability to forecast that is a challenge. So when you're estimating a construction job, when you're pricing in, you know, trucking, when you're pricing transportation cost of shipping something, uh, even when you're pricing in the cost of your the meal you're serving at the restaurant, it's hard to do that when your prices continue to go up of your raw material goods. So those are, you typically see they're selling less, maybe lower profits is something they're worried about. And they're definitely focused on the higher costs. Yeah. I think that business owners also look at shaping consumer behavior, right? And the reason I say that is because you brought up movies. My wife and I decided probably it's been at least five years, maybe even seven years now. We only go to the movies on Tuesdays, Tim, because it's Mm -hmm. $5 Tuesday. Yeah. When, when movies hit to 10 bucks, I'm like, not a chance. Now, I'm not going to a movie for $10. It's going to cost me $40 to go to the movies with my wife. Now, we go to $5 Tuesday. But one of the movie theaters here, $5 Tuesday, everything's regular price. But on another day of the week, they do like $1 popcorn. Movies are still expensive, but now it's only $1 popcorn instead of $7 popcorn. So they're driving behaviors on when people will go and purchase their goods or use their services. And I think that that's, it's brilliant in a way, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and that's ex- that's why, you know, these business owners, when they're addressing inflation and, and figuring out how they're going to respond to it, you're spot on. That's exactly what they're seeing is. So not only are, you know, the, the goods and services harder to find, you know, I, we, we wanted a, um, a generator. We live in an area where a lot of trees fall down. Mm. Uh, as a result, they fall on power lines. As a result, power goes out more often than you would expect. And so a lot of our neighbors had generators. So we wanted to get one just as a backup for when the power goes out. And we ordered it, we paid for it. And then we, they kept telling us it was on a ship somewhere for about oh, six no. months. But we eventually did get it. And power's gone out a couple of times and it's kicked on and it's working, but it, it was more expensive and it was harder to find and it took longer to get for sure. Yeah. Um, and to your point too, the consumers are finding that if their dollars are buying less, mm-hmm. then they're going to change how they spend, right? So I know I've read articles about Companies like Dell Computer, Best Buy, you know, the technology industry is being impacted. The movie industry, like you said, is being impacted. And then the, the big one that people talk to me about too is just labor cost. 
all you have to do is read or mm-hmm. an article or about business or just talk to a business owner. It's hard to attract and retain and find people. Um, we've experienced that in our firm. All of our clients have experienced it all across different industries. And it's hard for me then to forecast to what my cost of labor will be as I go into 2023, as we're doing our budgeting and planning, because all the business owners are talking like, what raises are you giving? You know, because <laughs> that, that that was important in the past, but yeah. it's even more critical now from what I understand and what I'm from my conversations with my clients. Yeah, is, is the, and I don't want to derail this conversation because it's about inflation, but inflation affects, like you said, employment. Are you seeing the same discussion with what benefits are you giving? Uh, yes. So I think in the past, benefits were more critical, especially when you're hiring people out of college or mm-hmm. you know five to 10 years out of college. Time off, benefits, travel, things like that, the perks. Flexibility. Um, yeah. I, yeah, flexibility. I am finding that there's a lot more conversation about salary. I, okay. I, think, that, I think that people are feeling the impact of inflation um, when they go shopping and uh, when they're looking to buy a house, looking to rent an apartment, looking to buy a car, everything's up. And I, I think they're, they're prioritizing cash flow a little more than they are benefits at this point. That's what I'm seeing and that's what I'm reading. Mm. Okay. That makes sense. And the other thing that has impacted just our just overall strategies that we talk about, you know, uh, helping clients manage their wealth going forward is a lot of clients historically have not been interested in bonds, for example, or CDs. And part of it is because they just, they were not paying relatively much, right? Mm -hmm. And interest rates have kind of moved up dramatically with inflation. And as a result, we have a lot more clients saying or asking, you know, should I be rebalancing maybe? Should I be adding more bonds to, you know, lock in some higher yields, let's say, rather than taking the risk in in the stock market? So it's a conceptual conversation you have with everybody. It's based on their risk tolerance and everyone's different time frame, tax status. Um, but I am I'm just saying that we're getting a lot more conversations in our meetings about bonds than we had been in probably the previous 14 years, I would say. Wow. I, and I hadn't even taken that into consideration, but that's, yeah, that's huge. I mean, that's a big shift. Yeah. And so what we're seeing is business owners are focusing on maybe more than ever. So a lot of our contractors are saying, you know, how do I lock in some of these prices? You know, how do I mm-hmm. maybe secure that I'm getting the raw materials, that I'm getting the the lumber, the steel, um, nails, you know, whatever, because that's, if, if I'm bidding and I'm getting the job and I can't get the raw materials, I can't deliver, you know, not only just trying to uh, lock in prices, but also locking in the ability to get what they need. So that's one thing they're telling me. Um, the other thing too is doing more with less. You know, I, I've talked in previous podcasts about the fact that less is more, you know, and focus and niche and, you know, like housing, housing costs. So, you know, you mentioned a minute ago benefits. Housing cost is different in Chicago versus Northwest Indiana versus Florida, for example. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas interest rates are impacting your ability to buy a house or your decision making process to buy a house or to build a new facility. In Florida, you know, I talked to realtors down there where a lot of people are buying a second home or paying cash. Interest rates don't have as great an impact. So my point is it's also very regional where your business is located and what you're selling to the consumer in terms of whether in inflation, interest rates, et cetera, are really impacting um, your business lines. Yeah. And and the thing is, is that you've spoken before about maintaining a certain amount in cash, right? For, mm-hmm. for both personal and also business owners, I'm sure. And those that have that cash on the sidelines, if you want to call it that, have so much more purchasing power. You, you mentioned homes, and I'm sure it's probably, I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, real estate investment property, uh, whether it's warehouses, things like that, we've seen that go down by quite a percentage. In fact, I think I just read yesterday that it was like 30% down as far as homes are concerned um, because of of inflation and, and the interest rates, right? So if you are a cash buyer, you have so much more power. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing too is if you think about uh, the investment decision that people will make. So this is not recommending an investment. This is not anything specific, but mm-hmm. just generally you would compare risk and reward. So if in the past, theoretically, I could buy a CD paying me one half of 1%, or I could look at an alternative investment that 
gives me a greater opportunity for a long-term rate of return, I might take that risk. Mm -hmm. Now, if I look and I say, all right, well, if I can get a six-month or a one-month treasury bill, for example, at four and a half or 4.8%, something like that, maybe I don't take as much risk. Maybe I don't invest as much in this alternative, maybe real estate or whatever the alternatives are. Mm -hmm. So it's also impacting where money's flowing too. And that's part of the economic decisions that business owners appear to be making right now. Yeah. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. And and I think maybe just because of the time of year where it's year end, and a lot of times people are doing annual reviews, people are focusing on budgets for next year. The number one thing I'm, I'm talking to clients now about or their concerns are really are about labor, you know, finding people and then also being able to pay um, enough based on the inflation rate to attract and retain them, you know, mm-hmm. recruit them. That's a real big thing. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's all over the news, right? There's, I think they're still saying that there's more jobs than there are people, yeah, which exactly. is weird, right? Yeah. That's kind of strange to me. And so what we've talked about so far have really been what I would consider like operational concerns about inflation, mm-hmm. but, but at the same time, how you operate determines profitability, how you operate determines growth rates and profitability, growth rates, people, your team, your processes are what really ultimately determine the value. So as it impacts the business value, so as you're, as the listeners may be looking forward one year, five year, 10 years out saying, you know, I want to plan for my exit strategy. How do I incorporate inflation into it? How do I respond to that? You know, one of the things that's happening is that what we call the discount rates are moving up. So for example, when, as I just mentioned, if I can get a very low risk treasury bill, you know, paying four and a half or, you know, something like that. If I'm going to invest in your business and buy your business, I'm going to need a much higher rate of return than maybe I did need even a year ago. If I, as I look back at the pandemic and I say, okay, maybe you're in an industry where you're more impacted by the pandemic, by COVID, um, by some of the things that happened, um, you're riskier. I'm going to require probably a higher rate of return uh, than I maybe would have three years ago. So what we call the discount rates, which is the how they discount the value of your business based on the rate of return that the buyer might want to get or need in order to invest in you, that's driving prices down generally. Um, again, that's a general statement, but that's what we're seeing. And the way to mitigate huh. that is really focusing on the things that drive that price back up that we've talked about on a number of different podcasts like growth rate, processes. This is really a good time as you're doing your business planning to kind of refocus and double up your efforts in your business plans to say, you know, what is our growth plan? How can we make sure that we're, you know, being, um, that we have things in process so that we can improve the value and offset this inflation in the uh, discount? Tim, you've spoken many times on this podcast about you know, business owners taking the time, right, to do exactly what you just said, to take a look, to see what they can do to maybe streamline what they can do to add more value, maybe take some work off their own plate. And you've spoken about coaches and consultants before and how important they can be to give you that outside perspective. Do you have somebody or do you have a team that you recommend that folks can reach out to and, and they can always reach out to you because we're going to give your contact information at the end of the show, but that you can recommend to say, Hey, look, this is a good person, or this is a good outfit to take a look at your business from an outside perspective and help you streamline it and be ready for 2023 or be ready for, you know, the, the second quarter. Yeah. So one of the things, and I've talked about it on a couple of podcasts in the past is when we work with a business owner, we try to first and foremost to help them evaluate their internal and their external team. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the internal team, we want to make sure that they have the pro- the correct people in the right seats that can help them grow and evaluate. And one of the things we see oftentimes is it's very difficult to find what we call like a chief financial officer or CFO. There, there's a, a lot of great office county managers, controllers, you know, that are very good on a day-to-day basis making sure that you're they're protecting your assets, protecting mm-hmm. your your balance sheet. But off, the biggest gap we see is in looking forward and, and having somebody internally on your team, like a CFO who can help you look forward, forecast, budget, um, help you model out growth. And oftentimes they're expensive. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of companies, mid-sized, small companies don't have them. 
So one of the things I have seen and we have used, and we went out, went through a process and we interviewed a number of what we call um, outsourced CFOs. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple of companies that we've kind of referred to clients, and there's actually uh, one individual that we've also referred to clients where they can really come in and for half or a third of the cost typically help you with that CFO role without having you to go out and find one and hire one and pay, you know, probably more than you want to pay. So that that the first step would be, you know, if anyone's interested in that, just kind of reaching out to me and I can kind of help you with the process. We have a number of checklist processes you can, I, I can help you with it, identify, you know, do you have the right team? Do you have the right people in place? What are your gaps? And then from there, we do have a number of um, outsourced experts who can really come in and help. And we've seen it work tremendously for a lot of clients. Uh, I mean, just just re- reflecting back on our part of our previous conversation, if you don't have to attract a CFO with all sorts of benefits and high salary and all that stuff, and you can get somebody that's, I guess you would call them a third party, where you just pay for their services and don't have to worry about all the benefits and bells and whistles, that's huge right now. Huge. Yeah, exactly. And, and so a lot of, um, I would call, I'd say old school business owners who basically bootstrapped and created the business and may, they might be first or second generation are not used to even considering hiring consultants yeah. um, because they just don't, they don't appreciate or understand or value the cost benefit of it. But I would say that the world's changed a lot, especially now in this interest rate environment, in this environment we're in where we can't find people. Hiring a consultant to come in and provide very niche-focused services that help you drive the value of your business, it can pay tenfold return when you go to sell. And it could be less hassle. Yeah. Because the other thing I find too, and if you're a business owner out there, you you see it, you understand it. When you hire somebody, you can make mistakes, right? And it could not be the maybe it's not the mm-hmm. right people even. So it's so hard to unwind that, and it's so expensive to recruit and retrain and hire. And then if you have to replace somebody, it, it's crazy. So oftentimes, bringing in a consultant to build out the processes and do the the primary level of them from you know the the systems and the the forecasting, the modeling, the budgeting. Um, then when you bring somebody in, it's much easier to find someone because they'll look at the your opportunity and say, yeah. I'm stepping into something that's working as opposed to I'm stepping into something that I have to create. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. And I'd say just so the the last thing I'll just leave with the listener in terms of the impact on um, inflation is, you know, the, there's probably going to be, or I should say possible winners and losers, you know, things like we all need to pay for energy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think bonds are going to probably be more popular. That's what we're seeing um, real estate, you know, historically, not this is not an investment recommendation, but historically, when we have inflation, real estate, hard assets have done better. Again, that that's not a guarantee or a forecast, but that's just talking about history. Mm-hmm. If you're in the food production distribution business, you know, if you're providing food, we all need food. You know, some of the companies or industries or services you're offering that might be at a disadvantage could be things like hospitality that's discretionary or Mm-hmm. You know, construction, if it's in a marketplace, in a geographical marketplace, or if the what you're building is something that's somewhat discretionary or people are holding off on based on interest rates. And some possible strategies I think that you want to consider is, you know, really, I mentioned it earlier, but as you're going through your budgeting forecasting process for 23, really look at your pricing models and make them flexible and adjustable. You know, I had somebody, uh, one of my clients say to me, yeah, I just brought somebody on who's really good with Excel and, you know, because Excel can be these static spreadsheets and they put formulas in there and all of a sudden now you can put different pricing in and it changes your your profitability. Things like that, you know, that take advantage of technology, review your expense structure, you know, are the things that are re- redundant or unnecessary? You know, if in fact people are forced with the decision about spending limited dollars to things that they believe are they have to do or they believe or discretionary, if you are offering unnecessary or discretionary services, maybe try to make sure that somehow you're making them more required, you know, and not as discretionary. Mm -hmm. And then truly leveraging automation. That's something we always talk about. That's something we've always done, but I think that's really critical these days. Yeah. Man, I mean, there's so much to consume on this this podcast. This has been fantastic. Again, we, we talked about it earlier 
you have a lot of resources, you have a lot of connections, you have a vast network, you've done a ton of research, Tim, for yourself and also for your clients. And anybody who's been listening to this podcast for a long time knows where your heart is, right? And and how you want people to succeed. So I applaud you for that. I thank you for all the information and the, the research you've done to be able to hook people up to the right, uh, the folks that can do the best for them. So let's let's hook them up with the right person to begin with, which is you. Give them your contact information so they can reach out and really get connected to the network that you've built. Yeah, so they can always give me a call at 219-531-4941 or send me an email at tscanell at hightoweradvisors.com. And the first step would really be, like you said, reach out and we have a, we call it a virtual family office, but it's basically a network of professionals that we've screened and interviewed. And when clients need specific services, resources, we try to give them two or three options that we've screened and reviewed. So uh, we'd love to help anybody who needs help on that. Yeah, absolutely. And then as a final note, one of the things you said as possible winners and losers, one of them was food production. So if you're out there producing donuts or potato chips, <laughs> you already have two customers. You've already heard that on the podcast today. So keep up the good work. I appreciate exactly. you. I like vinegar and pepper. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, and vinegar and pepper specifically. All right. Hey, Tim, this has been fun, man. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you, Eric. It's always fun to talk to you. You bet. And of course, our last thank you goes to you listening audience. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to the Wellstream podcast with Tim Scannell. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Tim comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it and leave a review, as this actually does help others find the show. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Hightower Great Lakes, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Wealthstream podcast. We hope you gained some valuable insight that you can apply to your life and share with others. Please don't forget to subscribe below to be notified when new episodes become available. And don't forget to live greater. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Hightower Great Lakes. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Hightower Great Lakes is a group comprised of investment professionals registered with Hightower Advisors LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Some investment professionals may also be registered with Hightower Securities LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Advisory services are offered through Hightower Associates, LLC. Securities are offered through Hightower Securities, LLC. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities. No investment process is free of risk, and there is no guarantee that the investment process or the investment opportunities referenced herein will be profitable. Past performance is neither indicative nor a guarantee of future results. The investment opportunities referenced herein may not be suitable for all investors. All data or other information referenced herein is from sources believed to be reliable. Any opinions, news, research, analyses, prices, or other data or information contained in this presentation is provided as general market commentary and does not constitute investment advice. Hightower Great Lakes and Hightower Advisors LLC, or any of its affiliates, make no representations or warranties expressed or implied as to the accuracy or completeness of the information or for statements or errors or omissions or results obtained from the use of this information. Hightower Great Lakes and Hightower Advisors, LLC, assume no liability for any action made or taken in reliance on or relating in any way to this information. The information is provided as of the date referenced in the document. Such data and other information are subject to change without notice. This document was created for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of the authors and do not represent those of Hightower Advisors, LLC, or any of its affiliates.